Welcome to The Metal Prognosis, my name is Lee, and we are continuing looking at uh, Ginger's guitarist, Roman's uh, IR pack that he released. Now I've done a few videos uh, on this already, uh, hooking up with external gear, and got some pretty cool and brutal results. Uh, so if you haven't seen them, I highly recommend uh, you check them out. But for today's video, as you can see, I've got nothing laid out here, because we are doing everything what's called in the box, which is everything in the computer. So we're going to be running a guitar, a dry guitar signal uh, just through my mixing console here, uh, and then we're going to run everything through the Neural NTS uh, guitar plugin, which is within itself pretty brutal. So it's going to be interesting marrying up the two different brutal things and seeing the results. So this is going to be lots of fun. Like all my videos, it's a little jam uh, that we like doing, and we isolate the guitars after that to kind of compare and have a good, good kind of. Uh, a B comparison from lack of a better term, and then we'll have a chat about it afterwards. So, thank you very much for joining this conversation, and let's check out to see how they're going to marry up together. Now we have everything set up, ready to go. Grab my Ormsby guitar. And first thing we do is just to check, not for the sound really, but to see if we've got good signal. And we do. It just sounds a bit like rubbish. So let's fix that up. So we go to insert, go over here, forward and into your suit, and here we are. And straight off the bat, this is how it sounds before we touch any settings or anything. To say it's brutal is an extreme uh, understatement. Sounding awesome, but, uh, so I'm not gonna run through everything about this actual program here. Uh, not in this video anyway. Uh, I'm happy to another time if anyone's keen, but let's just go straight to, oh well, super quick tour. Here's the amp head with some really cool settings with all different uh, gain frequency there, which is really cool. We've got all the different pedals that they have come with it. Also really cool. And um, But the main part that we want to see today is the speaker section uh, with the different microphones set up. So we have the <laughs> Dynamic 57, which I think is emulating the SM57. Uh, same as a condenser 184, but that's all right. Um, so this is really like, once again, I can go more in depth in this in another video if you like, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off this mic here so nothing is gonna come in through here. And let's load up our two favorite ones. So uh, tube amp, yep, SM57 with the E906 uh, and the 1A. And this is what it sounds like with that one first. Sounds awesome. Which I'd be surprised if it didn't. But let's go on to our other favorite one, which is going here, the R121 and the SM57. We go to the 1A, like we have with all of them. And this is how this one sounds. I 
did miss a couple of notes there. So once again, we get the same, uh, or the characteristics of these have carried on through all the different things we've tried them with so far. So uh, this one here, the SM57 with the um, R121, definitely has a lot more richer bottom end and dynamic to it, which is really cool. So what is really cool with this program, which is exactly what we're going to do now, is we can blend both of them together because we have uh, two different, <laughs> I was just about to point at them. Um, I'm still getting used to this whole on-screen uh, recording capturing thing. Uh, so I'll circle it. This uh, speaker here, so the in-house in program is really cool how it's got a mic and you can move it around and forwards and backwards and closer to the cone and outside, which is really cool. But as soon as you add your own, it gets rid of all those functions because uh, they're already preset all of Roman's um, settings uh, that he set up with uh, Coffee Audio. So we lose that and that's fine because they've done all the hard work already. So let's add them both in together. SM57, the E906. And now we have both of them um, where we can't alter any of the microphone settings because they're already preset in the, in the external ones we loaded. And we make sure we turn it on. And this is what they sound like both together. Now these are both running directly in the middle. So even though we've got two speakers there and on the screen, uh, they're left and right. Uh, the sound is actually coming mono, so it's all put in the, the middle equally. Because uh, as you can see, let me use the mouse, we've got the levels here, so they're both coming in uh, at neutral. So with these, they aren't marrying up the best. Let's see why. So we have, um, which is really cool, they've done this feature as well. You got a phase issue. So let's put them out of phase. Uh, so what we're doing here is, without giving a full lesson on how phase works, is we're listening to what is being taken out of the mix. Okay, so this is what's now missing when we add both of them together. So Zero bottom end has been taken out because there's none there at all. It sounds a little bit tinny and very uh, high heavy, which is funnily enough, I think a lot of the frequencies that I like in my guitar tone that gives it that cutting edge blade type of uh, sound and characteristics. Uh, but that's no problem, that's just how it is. So we put that back in phase together and interesting. Interesting. So if we were to delve in a little bit more with this, and we really did want to blend them there, because there is something close to being really cool there. Um, there's heaps of options on there of what um, Roman from Ginger's iPack uh, has to offer. So we can definitely delve in deeper if we wanted to, but not for this video. Um, if that's something you're interested in, let me know, because I'm happy to do uh, little tutorials like that on how I like to clean up my guitar tones when mixing different uh, cabinet settings, whether they be uh, ones in real life, like this one here, or uh, ones in the computer, in the impulse response world or IR world. But that's enough for now in regards to mucking around with this, because I don't want this video to go on forever. Let's have a jam. So what I thought would be cool is we have three different uh, settings there that we went through. 
So let's do three different jams with all of them. Uh, like the other ones, I'll name them A, B, and C. So uh, the very first one, which is this one. That's gonna be A. And B is gonna be this one. That's gonna be B. And C is gonna be, you guessed it, both together. And we'll put them in a band mix. So we'll double up on the guitars, have them extreme left and right. Uh, add bass and drums, and let's see how they hold up really in the mix, because my initial thought is C is just a little bit too bottom rich. Um, but in a mix with everything else, it might actually pop more and might fit in a little bit better. We'll find out. Uh, and I say we're going to find out. You're going to find out in about 10 seconds. I'm going to find out in, I don't know, however long it takes me to do, which I'll find out. So sit back, relax, enjoy the tunes. Uh, and I'll see you all on the other side. We can talk about our final thoughts. Time for my final thoughts on matching up the neural NTS uh, interface with uh, Roman's IR pack that he did with Coffee Audio. So firstly, uh, the IR pack that Roman put together, the end result, so after you put it through an amp and a distortion, uh, is brutal. It is absolutely brutal, which is what I love about it. And the neural NTS, just on its own, is an extremely brutal uh, interface to use to get a guitar tone with. So. Matching them up together is absolutely no surprise about the brutal results uh, that we got. So um, what I want to have a quick chat about is the three different ones that we decided to put together today. So we had A, which is the SM57 matched up with the E906. Uh, that um, 
That was arguably, if you'd asked me before this video, I'd say that was my favorite. But uh, it didn't have as much as an impact running it uh, through this setup and this way compared to uh, B, which was the um, SM57 matched up with R121. Uh, I felt like normally that had a, it definitely had a lot more bottom, uh, richer dynamic to it, but I felt like it just cut through a little bit better. And normally uh, I tend to veer towards uh, the drier side of guitar. And it's a little bit more, uh, I like to use the word like blade. It's got that blade and that saw type of uh, emotion to it and that real cut through type of sound. But uh, for this little uh, video that we've done today, I felt like B had the best uh, cut through with all of them and I felt sat best in the mix when adding it all together and doing it. Uh, and uh, in saying that, C, which is we, when we added both of them together uh, as one. Now, as, as we heard, when you uh, reverse one of the phases to it, we did lose a lot of that um, those frequencies that I personally really like. And it definitely emphasized uh, the bottom dynamics, which I felt it may have done a little bit too much because uh, I felt like it got a little bit too drowned and lost in it. Not to say either of these were bad, but just going on those three back to back, uh, that's kind of my conclusion to them. So definitely keen to hear your conclusions if you feel uh, the same or uh, disagree with me. And, you know, that's totally fine. Your opinion is correct because it's uh, your opinion. <laughs> I can't say your opinion is wrong. Uh, not at all. Uh, now, in saying that, just a couple of little uh, things to cover. So firstly, um, how I like to capture my guitars and record them for these videos is I use the settings uh, that I'm jamming with. So as you're watching me jam each uh, individual one, I'm using the actual sounds uh, that you're hearing as well. Because I, as a guitarist, um, like to, and, and as an engineer as well, I like to do it with uh, the musos I work with, I like them to hear the sound close to what's actually going to be on the final uh, end result of whatever they're working on, whether it be a demo, EP, or, or an album, because I really feel like that brings the most out of the player. And uh, depending on what sounds are actually coming through, for me personally, it changes how I play and how I attack and how I approach uh, each different section of uh, whatever song. With these videos, no exception. I still do exactly the same. Now, because we recorded everything dry and we just had it running through an interface there, uh, I'm sure there are people out there that are saying, you could have just done the one take and just change the settings on them. And that would have been fine. But I feel like that's, you're correct. You can absolutely do that. But I feel like that takes away from the actual character of uh, the relationship with the guitar and uh, the guitar tone. Because, uh, if I feel like there's a lot more of a uh, pop in the high end or more of a mid grind, uh, as in the mid frequency, when I when I uh, pop some of my high notes, they really emphasize a lot more. They have different characteristics, which has changed how I play. And I might give it that little bit more the next time I hear it because I know it's coming up. I'm excited about it or I want to emphasize it. Or it might be a case of if there's too much bottom end, I might lay off a little bit of the. Um, a palm muting if there's any because there might be just too much bottom end and I might feel like it's oversaturating it and kind of drowning it in uh, the bottom frequencies. So I feel like it is very important, uh, not really very important, but it's a it's a preferred approach that I like to take with my guitaring uh, in relationship to the actual guitar tone to get the best result out of what you're playing and what you're hearing. Um, and that's why I do it that way instead of just uh, doing a straight, for lack of a better term, a copy and paste and just changing the settings on the interface. Um, so yeah, for anyone that's curious why, don't know if you are or not, but that is exactly why I do it. And the other thing I wanna to quickly touch base on as well is from a, an approach on how to do this, is I did near to nothing with the uh, neural NTS. Uh, as, as you saw, as we did it together, we put the plug in uh, on and that was it. Everything sounded brutal and 
sounded pretty cool to start with. You can delve in absolutely a lot more and get some and fine tune uh, the tone to be a uh, hundred times better than what we got in this video. But I wanted to just give an example of this is how it can match up with this uh, very quickly and didn't want to delve in too long. And I also didn't want to do too much off camera because I feel like that's um, it's not really dishonest, but I like doing things on camera uh, with you all. So if there's anything new that I'm experiencing for the first time matching up any of these things, um, I like to kind of share that with you instead of doing it off the scenes and finalizing it and fine, sorry, fine tuning it and then finalizing it to come up with something more brutal and more full on. Um, because also that kind of, I don't know, I think that's kind of weird just hearing the end result, not actually seeing uh, the journey that we go through uh, together, which is something I do a lot on this channel with all my things. But in saying that, that is all a bit of a tangent, but a fun one. And like all these things, it's a conversation and having tangents in conversations is absolutely fine. Uh, it's what we all do in our conversations with our friends. So to conclude what I did in this video, matching out the IRs, uh, Romans IRs from Gingers with the neural NTS was fun. Brutal, really good results. Um, but I think what was most interesting was it was very, I felt like this is the, um, the most, a little bit lost of words, sorry, bear with me. It was the most, I don't want to use the word separated, but I think it had the most difference compared to how we married it up with other equipment. So if you see on the other videos I've done, on the Roman IR, uh, going through with uh, the solar state of running through different amp heads. Uh, those two main uh, settings that I chose to take out of those packs, for lack of a better term, reacted a very similar uh, across each different external equipment, where this one internally I felt had the most different compared to everything else. Not a bad thing, not better or worse, just worth noting and I find it interesting uh, on how it interprets it and how um, it manifests it all together to create the sound what it does. And in saying that, uh, I'm definitely going to put it to a different um, interface uh, on the computer as well to see how that reacts differently too uh, compared to the uh, neural NTS. Uh, so then we can compare them and see how they all, all marry up together since well, this is just lots of fun, really. And if there are any Ginger fans out there as well, I'm sure this is fun seeing what they're like too. And any guitarists out there that might think this might be the uh, pack for them. This is a really good way to see how it can react differently to lots of different other things. So I will be doing different amp heads in that as well uh, because I've only done uh, the Kraken at the moment. Uh, unless you're watching this video in the far, far future, I might have a few different amp heads done by then, by the time you watch this. So, which is fine. Uh, that means you get to go back and binge watch all of them if you like and compare them back to back and not have to wait uh, like we do with TV shows and other things and albums coming out where we got to <laughs> play the waiting game until we really get to see what we want or hear what we want to hear. So in saying that, I'll do my sign off now because I think I've babbled on enough. But thank you very much for hanging around for this long, whether you skip through it or watch through the whole thing. Either way, I really appreciate you being a part of these conversations and I really hope you're enjoying them too. Uh, and if it's your first time, welcome. And I hope you have enjoyed it. <laughs> and hopefully I will uh, see you all again, whether you are a regular or a newbie. Um, and until next time, I thoroughly look forward to uh, chatting with you then. And please, stay safe.